Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Good Ram Show with me, Chris Goodrum. Right, this week, back to whiskey. Yay, I hear you saying. Anyway, um, not just any old whiskey. Um, uh, there, there were several comments, uh, there was a couple of comments on the, on the last, uh, last uh, episode of the show and uh, there have been several people um, mentioning the same thing that... Uh, it's about time I did an affordable whiskey tasting, you know. Um, I know that sort of you know, we, we don't all have deep pockets. We all can't afford to, to spend sort of three figures on a, on a bottle of whiskey. So um, are there any bargains to be had? Um, so I kind of had a rummage in, in the, the various uh, sample boxes uh, that um, <laughs> are dotted around the place. And... Um, I thought, right, okay, so nothing t costing more than 35 quid. I mean, 35 quid is, is, is pretty reasonable. Um, and um, in actual fact, I've got sort of six whiskies um, and the most expensive, I think, is 33, I think. And not uh, you would have thought blends. I mean, and that was my initial reaction. That if we're going to do a cheap and cheerful tasting, then it's going to be um, blended whiskey. But in actual fact, I've got two blended whiskies. I've got a vatted uh, malt or a blended malt whiskey, if you'd like. And I've got three single malts as well. Uh, and one with an age statement or, that retail for un, or can be found, shall we say, for under 30 quid. Um, so... So there you have it. So it's going to be um, an interesting tasting, and um, I might as well just uh, just introduce the lineup then. I think. Okay, so we're going to kick off with uh, the Antiquary. Now, um, as you probably know, the Antiquary uh, brand is owned by Tomatin, and uh, I think it was last last year the. Um, the distillery decided to sort of revamp the, the, the range, drop the age statements and bring out a new no age statement bottling. Previ prior to that, um, the standard or the sort of entry level, I hate that terminology, entry level um, bottling was the, the Antiquary Trail, which was a really very, very good whiskey um, and which... You know, Indeed, stopped because I thought it was uh, excellent value for money. But um, so this, we're going to kick off with um, the new no age statement bottling, which can be found for as little as nineteen pounds twenty three. So that is, in my opinion, pretty damn affordable whiskey. So hopefully that's going to be good. I mean, it's got a chunk of tomatin in. Obviously, they're going to be using younger spirits. Um, and possibly a little less malt, maybe. So it will be interesting to see uh, see what it's like. So the uh, second blend that we'll be looking at is a slightly, well, I wouldn't say slightly more interesting blend. That's probably the wrong way of putting it. But it's a limited edition blend uh, called the Cutty Sark Prohibition Edition, bottled at 50%. Now, uh, according to the blurb, um, Cutty Sark uh, is currently owned by uh, the Edrington Group, who also own uh, Famous Grouse, McAllen, Highland Park. And the, the brand itself was originated by Berry Brothers and Rudd and, um, in 1923, to be precise, and uh, was named after the, uh, the tea clipper of the same name. Now, this limited edition Prohibition edition uh, was launched uh, to celebrate one William McCoy, uh, who uh, apparently smuggled Cutty Sark into the USA during the Prohibition. So, uh, limited edition, could be interesting. And um, cheapest I've found it is £23.23. .23. So, again, I think pretty, pretty affordable. We'll see how that one stacks up. Now, this one you may not have actually heard of. Uh, it's a relatively new company called the Edinburgh Whiskey Company that are an independent bottling company. Uh, they bottle single cast bottlings like most of the independents and um, this is their uh, blended malt or vatted malt as I would uh, refer to it, bottled at 43%. It is called uh, the New Town Blend Advocates Bottling, <laughs> bit of a mouthful. Um, apparently, so the blurb goes, uh, this was bottled to honour the Newtown Project, uh, which was suggested in 1752, which I'm assuming was Newtown Project was in Edinburgh, I'm guessing. Um, <coughs> apparently at the time, it was the largest planned city development in the world uh, to house the wealthy. 
and uh, encourage them uh, to come back to Scotland because uh, they'd all buggered off to go and live in London. So um, uh, there we go. Nothing, uh, <laughs> nothing about sort of uh, pandering to the wealthy. Uh, incidentally, um, this is I think this is the most expensive bottle uh, in actual fact that I've got here this afternoon, and that that can be found for as little as thirty three pounds. So uh, again, I still think you know affordable. Um, the first of the three malts we will be looking at is uh, this one. This is the Glenlivet Founders Reserve, bottled at 40%. Now, again, entry level. Horrible terminology, but um, Glenlivet is not a... Young Glenlivet, the 12-year-old, is not a whisky I'm a huge fan of, it has to be said. I do find it a little bit on the dull side. Can't say I'm particularly over-enamoured with the 18-year-old. Uh, either to be to be honest with you, um, and but but it ages amazingly well. I've tasted some beautiful old Glenlivets, it has to be said. Um, so this is the entry level, and uh, I'm hoping that uh, it's got some interesting characteristics. It uh, again, actually, it's, it, this is the most expensive bottling. I do beg your pardon on the uh, the early one. Uh, uh, can be found for as little as a thirty three pounds twenty seven. So it's only twenty seven p more expensive than the Newtown blend, but um, single malt there. So let's see how that one stacks up. And the second single malt, like I said, an age statement uh, for less than. 30, 30, well, less than £32, £31.45 I've seen this one advertised. This is the Ben Ryak 10-year-old. Now, this was released in 2014. Uh, it's bottled at 43% and was the first 10-year-old uh, to be released by the then owners, uh, Billy Walker, uh, when he'd um, purchased it. I mean, obviously, as you know, Billy sold uh, Ben Ryak to uh, Brown Foreman fairly recently for the not small sum of 285 million. I mean, obviously, Ben Ryak uh, is not just Ben Ryak, it's also Glenn Glassow and uh, Glenn Dronach as well. So, you know, three three distilleries for 285 million. I mean, that's that's some serious, serious pocket money. But anyway, let's um, it'll be interesting to see uh, what that one's like. I mean, I I like Ben Ryak. Um, it's certainly one of the more sort of slightly more weightier space side whiskies, and um, it will be interesting to see what uh, what that one is like. And finally, we'll be looking at probably one of the most biggest bargains I think I've ever come across, or I've come across recently, I should say, and that is the uh, Glen Morrie um, Peated Edition. Uh, as the standard sort of uh, no age statement bottlings, they have uh, the, the classic, the peated, and the portwood. Uh, this we sell for twenty six pound forty. So, um, and I must admit, I've only just recently take, taken these into stock because I, I kind of ta toyed around with them. I was never a huge fan of the um, Chardonnay finish. I didn't really think that worked amazingly well. Um, but I had tasted the sort of like the, the standard uh, Glen Mori bottle, which is a beautiful spray. It's soft, it's crisp, it's citric, it's got a little bit of grass to it, and I just thought, yeah, it's a lovely, lovely bottling. And then I had the opportunity to taste the peated and the portwood and thought, yeah, these are really very, very good value for money whiskies. So £26.40, uh, this is the Glen Mori bottled at uh, 40%. So. Interesting lineup. Uh, I, I hope you think. Um, you know, like I said, I took some digging in the in the sample bo boxes to uh, to find some uh, interesting stuff. So uh, let's um, let's crack on and start with the antiquary, shall we? <laughs> okay. So let's see what the nose gives us in, shall we? There's a fair amount of floral. Crisp floral grain whisk, uh, grain whiskey component here. Um, touch of touch of barley, a little bit of honey, a little bit of smoke, just kind of drifting around in the, in the, in the background. Um, certainly, I, I seem to be getting quite a bit of tomatin character, quite a bit of rich fruit. Um, I believe, well I don't know whether it's still the case, but I think in the in the old bottling certainly there was a, a smidgen of Ardbeg uh, to give it a bit of uh, a bit of smoke. I think there was actually quite, I think there was about 20 odd different malts that go into it, I think, but uh, um, it, it's, it's really nicely balanced. Yeah, I mean, you could, you can argue the point that the grain is a little bit further forward, um, 
but you know that's it's n not a detriment in my opinion when when you've got some lovely floral um, grain character it can be really appealing and um, the thing with blends is it's all about the balance between the the, the different components and um, it's got a lovely sweetness it kind of it's kind of being enhanced by the sort of like slight honeyed character of, uh, of of the malt I mean it's not mega complex you wouldn't expect it to be but I think it's yeah, it's really nicely made I'm getting a little bit of oak coming through now a little bit of almost kind of coconutty toffee kind of note you know pretty subtle but um yeah nice pleasant Power. Hey, that's a pleasant progression. It's got got some lovely weight, some nice toffee, toffee dough, um, some dense fruit. The grain kind of like slightly, slightly sweet, slightly slightly floral again. Kind of nips at, right at the edges. Um, it's not quite so um, grippy and sharp as some grain um, can be. Um, and that's all just really nicely integrated. The, the grain does kind of come through a little bit further on the end, so you, you're kind of sort of like getting oak, then you're getting a little bit of malt, and then you're getting a little bit of grain. But, you know, that's 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 what you want from whiskey. You want some nice progression, and I think that certainly certainly has that. It's a little bit of, a little bit of spice. I mean, it's not the longest whiskey I've ever tasted, um, but I think um, for 19 quid, you, know, you, you can probably buy an awful lot worse for that. I mean, that's... that's that's very, very impressive for the, for the money. Okay, so on to the cutty sarp. Let's uh, see what the nose gives us on this thing, shall we? Quite dense. Um, dusty... Um, dusty barley, um, but not sort of... not in a mature kind of way, more kind of pollen uh, notes so it's got that kind of sort of dusty kind of cloud a little bit of honey again quite it feels like it's got a fairly high degree of malt the the grain is kind of quite um, sat back again slightly floral a little bit more um, nippy um, than the uh, the antiquary yeah that's Again, a really nicely balanced blend. Um, certainly doesn't smell like it's fifty percent. You would expect a little bit more alcohol, so it's all quite quite well balanced, quite well integrated. Um, a little bit simpler, possibly than the uh, the antiquary. There's no. I'm not getting any any sort of kind of smoke notes or, or anything like that. It is all. Yeah, and maybe not quite so much honey, but it's it's it seems to be very barley centric, very very easy going. Um, yeah, certainly I think this is uh, this is quite quite pleasant. Power. Again, a nice progression. Again, starts off with um, with some sort of toffee dough, some weighty apricoty um, fruit, and then mm, bang! In comes that sort of real grippy, slightly sharp uh, grain. It's kind of emphasised, obviously, by the alcohol, and it makes the mouth kind of quite water at the uh, at the finish. And it's um, but there's enough honey and sweetness from the malt to kind of just kind of keep going so although you're getting that kind of um, sharp um, finish to it it's, it's got some uh, character kind of uh, underneath it some, some some sweetness to just just offset it make you know so it's not too kind of you know mouth puckering so a um, little bit of spice on the aftertaste just just a smidgen of spice you know it's a, 
again, you know, a really very, very pleasant blend. And again, you know, less than 25 quid. So again, you can't really argue with that. You know, that's that's got some, some real quality to it. You know, it's good stuff. Okay, now, so on to the vatted uh, malt. Let's, let's see what the nose gives us on this one, shall we? Right off the bat, it smells younger. Um, it's got a slightly high-toned character, um, but wonderfully estery, um, although in a kind of a restrained kind of way. It's quite oily, um, but it's definitely got some pineapple, some barley, hint of cold tea, a um, little bit of subtle wood spice touch of, of, of almost kind of um, green fruit, um, almost sort of gooseberry kind of uh, notes kind of coming through. Kind of seems to hint that there might be a little bit of sherry cask used in this. That sort of slightly kind of refilly, herbally kind of sherry note. I uh, wouldn't imagine there's a huge amount, but it certainly seems to indicate that there is a little bit of sherry cask here to... Um, add some weight. It's kind of settling down a little bit, it's not quite so high tone now in the glass, it seems to be sort of, you know, getting a little bit more comfortable, um, a little bit more weighty. Again, I'm not really getting much in the way of smoke or, or peat or anything like that, so it's kind of probably more more um, spay, I would. I think it is all spay in actual fact, um, yes it is indeed. Um, so it's got that sort of slightly weighty character along with a touch of sort of green fruit acidity that and um citrus so yeah hmm. and a touch of cold tea as well interesting palette That's got a lovely length to it. Just like the other two, a little bit more oak up front. Um, less, not as to well, not toffee at all in actual fact. It's more kind of creamy, sort of clotted cream, um, uh, American oak. A little bit of what feels like cherry spice just coming through right at the very, very finish. Um, again, lovely weight to it, juicy, fruity, um, with, um, you know, a really nice... Um, green citric uh, note to kind of cleanse the palate, a um, little bit of gooseberry, some nice nice spices on the finish, you know, um, yeah, absolutely lovely, really well put together blend, um, got some weight, some oak, some spice, some citrus, you know, what, what, what more could you ask for, I mean it's just sort of like a really enjoyable dram, so yeah, good, that's, that's nice. Moving on to the first of uh, our uh, single malts, let's see what the uh, Founders Reserve gives us then, shall we? Do you know what, actually, this is this is quite a pleasant nose. Um, it's It's got a lot of oak, uh, which is quite surprising. Um, very creamy, custardy, there's some big ester banana-y notes. Um, Oh, this is this is a big, big nose for it has to be said. I mean, seriously, young. Wouldn't quite say vibrant, um, but young, intense. Um, and you know what? This <laughs> this beats the twelve-year-old absolutely hands down. Um, it's almost got that kind of slightly Irishy kind of character. You know that big estery kind of slightly honeyed fruit. The sort of big apricot. The pineapple, banana, like I said, you know, it's got, it's got some real weight to it. I mean, it's not a great deal after that, it has to be said, but, you know, so it's kind of all kind of fruit and oak, um, but, you know what, I, I, I like this, this is, this is great. 
considering what, what the 12 year old is like, which is you know, dull, um, a bit like the Cragginmore 12 year old, but you know, this is, you know, got, even though it's got you know, a lot, lot younger spirit, it's got more going for it, in my opinion. Power. fruity, might be a little bit sort of confected for some people, it's got that slightly bubble gummy white fruit but again loads and loads of banana and apricot and pineapple, um, the oak is kind of impinged a little bit on the finish, it's not very long at all and there is a little bit of bitterness but it's got so much fruit that, that it's just really counterbalancing that, um, there's a little bit of, of of almost grassy notes, green citrus fruit coming through, a little bit of almost kind of kiwi, I would say. Um, but it's a big mouthful, big mouthful of fruit and oak, and um, yeah, okay, so the, the oak, like I said, is having a, a negative effect upon the length of the uh, of, of the whiskey, but, you know, put that in your mouth and it's like, ooh, it's just really glend of it, you know. And that, that was my, my impressions. I mean, admittedly, this was a sample from, um, I think this was a sample from the, um, uh, the whiskey magazine. And obviously, I had no idea uh, of, of, of where it came from. And when I found out, I was, I was pretty impressed, it has to be said. So, so yeah, um, 33 quid. Well, if you like your malt big and fruity and, and oaky, then, well, yeah, that ticks all the right boxes, doesn't it? Okay, so let's move on to that, the Ben Ryak. Let's see what the nose gives us then, shall we? Quite oily, um, but not hugely oily. Um, again, it's it's quite fruity. Uh, there's um, apricot and um, pineapple, sort of slightly tinned pineapple, possibly. Um, quite citric but not in a sort of an overtly citric kind of way it's it's kind of it's an interesting one this it's kind of on the one hand it's it's quite quite oily and not flat but um compressed and then you've got this kind of citric element which is kind of at the edges some quite what feels like mature spice in actual fact and i mean i remember tasting the 16 year old ben ryak and um, thinking, you know, that tasted a lot older. It's it's got a sort of earthy kind of spice note, kind of, but it's also got some some really lively fruit. It's um, it's a complex uh, malt. This one it has to be said. There's a there's a lot going on here. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's got some lovely weight to it. It's got that, like I said, it's got some sort of earthy kind of character coming on there's a there's a bit of green fruit bit of citrus bit of grass bit of almost kind of touch of possible possible sherry sweetness uh, almost kind of moving into that kind of rye like kind of um, herbal leafy uh, character touch of, of unsweetened honey as well yeah impressive complex. Um, can't argue with that one. Touch of cereal coming through now. Uh, a little bit of sort of multi-cereal kind of notes. Power. Mellow, earthy, malty. Again, touch of cereal, um, bit of herbal notes, some pleasant fruit. Again, weighty, slightly oily, apricoty kind of fruit. Um, but it's a, it's a real malty mouthful. It has to be said. There's a little bit of licorice coming through right on the finish, but that kind of 
you know, malt biscuit kind of note, kind of uh, it seems to be a, a sort of a continuing theme sort of uh, throughout the, uh, the, 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 the whiskey itself. Um, good length, um, and again, impressive, you know, at, um, you know, less than £32. Again, bargain if you like, again, that sort of malty, sort of biscuity kind of earthy, slightly spicy style of, uh, uh, of whiskey. And, hmm, yeah, yeah, that's, that's good. And finally, time for a bit of pee, as they say. Let's uh, see what the Glen Murray gives us then, shall we? Lovely, crisp, kind of old school Colila kind of character, it has to be said. Um, but with a little bit more white fruit, a little bit of a little bit of barley, a bit of grass. Elegant, delicate, um, again really well balanced, um, not too peaty to sort of like, you know, swamp the character of the spirit. Not particularly coastal as you would expect. Um, slightly sort of dry. There's a little bit of a medicinal note uh, creeping in there, so kind of gives it that sort of, sort of sub isla kind of coal either like feel to it. Um, but I think for sort of a fairly light uh, spay, it, so it does have some, some depth to it. And uh, this is a like I said, we have 26 quid. That's really very, very enjoyable. Pal? That's a really tarry finish, you know, it's quite a yum 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 kind of, you know, chewy, tarry, malty finish, um, kind of opens up with the sort of like the light spay fruits, um, grass, almost some gristy character but not, not quite, um, and then the peat kind of gently unfolds, a little bit medicinal, um, like I said, quite tarry certainly on the finish. Um, Again, medium kind of length, you know, not, not hugely complex, um, but not one-dimensional either. It does kind of have some nice progression through the, the sort of like the sweet barley and, and, uh, and sort of spay character and then the malt. Not a huge amount of oak, but, you know, that's not, a, not an issue with, uh, with, I think, with this whiskey because it just kind of allows the slightly exuberant kind of youthful character to just come through, you know, and so... Um, Hmm. Yeah, a little bit drying right on the aftertaste, but again, you know, I think for sort of twenty odd, twenty six quid, that's that's a that's a real real bargain on it. Right. Okay. So let's sum up this afternoon's uh, episode of the show, then, shall we? Um, I think this just goes to show that there there are some good whiskies there at affordable prices. Certainly, I think um, probably the pick of the um, the blends is actually the cheapest uh, in the, the the antiquary. It just ticks all the right boxes. It's got a little bit of little bit of everything, you know. Um, really nicely balanced, bit of smoke, some fruit, you know, a uh, little bit of oak. So, what more can you ask for? And you know, less than twenty quid. You know, it's 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 an absolute steal in my opinion. Um, Cutty Sark, yeah, again, well put together blend. Um, that fifty percent alcohol, which when you think about it, when you come to think about it, I mean, um, you know, the duty on something bottle. I mean, most blends and most of the the should we say the the more inexpensive whiskies are, are going to be bottled at forty percent, obviously to keep the the duty element down. Um, so to get, you know, a 50% bottling at, you know, 33 quid, that's, that's really impressive. And it's, it, it was not unbalanced. It was all just pretty harmonious, a little bit of spice as well, you know, just quite weighty and, and, and really impressive. Um, the, uh, um, Edinburgh Whiskey Company Newtown Blend. Yeah, again, just well put together, you know, um, 
All right, yes, it's it, it's the more expensive end of the spectrum in the terms of, of, of this particular tasting, but, you know, I think, you know, you, you shell out sort of like, you know, 33 quid, and you wouldn't be disappointed with it. You know, it's, again, really well made, well blended. Can't argue with that. Um, moving on to um, the Glenlivet. Um, it's, I, I have to say, it's it possibly whiskey of the day it has to be said you know um maybe because it has just defied all expectations you know there i was thinking glenn live it you know dull boring um and here's the sort of like the, the, the entry level baby sort of he's going to be young spirits probably going to be all over the place couldn't be further from the truth it's just joyfully fruity big uh, big fruit, big banana -y sort of oaky kind of, you know, it's just something to really get your teeth into, you know. Uh, I mean, I know it's not going to appeal to ev everyone, but I, I just think, considering what, how my, my personal opinion of, say, the 12-year-old is, you know, that just beats the hell out of it, you know, that is just really, really impressive. Um, ben Ryak, 10-year-old, um, how much more complexity do you want for less than 30 quid? Um, well, less than um, 32 pounds, I should say. Um, great whiskey. Um, so not as obviously exuberantly fruity as the Glenlivet, more malty and, and oily and, and uh, uh, a little bit darker. Um, yeah, I mean, how many 10 year olds can you think of that sort of uh, uh, retail for less than 35 quid? There's not a lot of them, so probably absolute bargain of the day and the Glen Murray peated um 26 quid great whiskey um if you like your peated malts then you know you can you, you can't go wrong with this particular one balanced not too peated still got some of that sort of lovely kind of crisp um classic uh spay kind of character um and a little bit of peat as well you know so well What's not to like about that one? So, so yeah, another another great whiskey. So, anyway, um, I hope you've in, enjoyed this this week's episode of the show. I mean, I'll you know endeavour to probably do a, another one at uh, some time in the future when I can uh, dig out a few more um, uh, affordable samples. And um, I haven't got a clue what I'm going to be doing next week. I'll probably figure that one out midweek. But um, well, ho hopefully it will be interesting. And um, anyway, so all that's left to say is if you're watching this and you are into your gins, don't forget uh, July the 13th we'll be having our second um, uh, gin tasting evening in the shop. First one went really, really well. I mean, if you know the shop, you know how small it is. We had 17 of us crammed into the, uh, into the shop downstairs. So it was, um, shall we say, quite, um, quite cosy, shall we say. And... Um, a wonderful evening everybody had a great time uh i'll endeavor to sort of select a, a different um array of gins to be tasted on that uh, uh evening so uh if you haven't bought your ticket then you can pop along to our website it's uh, uh and you can purchase the tickets there and i think there's a handful left um hopefully uh you know we'll i'll be seeing you there and so anyway that's this week's episode of the show in the bag i uh, i hope you've in, enjoyed it hopefully you know go and f grab one of these particular whiskies if any of these kind of like sound like your cup of tea you know everyday drinking dram so to speak then um you know um well done the job then haven't i so what's left to say is uh, good afternoon and good dramming <laughs>